so today we're going to be putting this Morimoto Elite HID system on our 2013 Ford Focus for a customer here in Atlanta. What we're going to do first is just explain all of the parts that you may see with the kit. First thing is going to be the ballast. We have either the Morimoto 3.5 or the Morimoto 5.5. 3.5 is 35 watts, is industry standard as far as power output goes. 5.5 is a 50 watt ballast, so it's a little bit boosted. Uh, puts out 50 watts compared to the conventional 35. So I'll give you a little bit brighter light, but it uh, runs a little bit hotter too. Uh, along with the ballast, you get some mounting hardware, pretty basic. You get some uh, screws and uh, bolts right here. That'll be used to attach the bracket that comes with it to the backside. Uh, the bracket just goes right in that channel there, screws and brackets here, and there's two holes that actually mount it to the back of the ballast. And when you put the ballast in your car, it's important to put these on. That helps to not only transfer a little bit of heat, but it grounds the ballast a little bit as well. So we do recommend that. Uh, along with that, we actually are using our new Morimoto XB35 uh, 4300K H7 bulbs is what's going to be used in this focus. So we have that here. Uh, for the wiring, we have two different options. Uh, the first is our standalone CAN bus harnesses, which are used to cancel out any error codes that would uh, appear on the dash after changing the headlights. That's what these are here. There'll be two of those in a set. The other option for wiring that comes standard is going to be the heavy-duty relay harness which is more of a conventional harness. It has grounds, it has a, a connection for the positive battery terminal, and it powers those ballasts through two uh, cube relays. Uh, other pieces of wiring that you may or may not see with the kit, depending on your application, is gonna be something like a capacitor link, which will go along with the input on the harness. It has a capacitor that's integrated, and it goes to a ground on the car. And what this does is it absorbs and smooths out any pulsating voltage that comes out from the car in the case of a daytime running light, or a CAN bus system that may be present. And the other option is going to be something like this resistor link here, which helps to add resistance back into the headlight circuit. Again, after the headlights are changed, the computer may recognize that. You would put this back in just to fool the computer into thinking that nothing's ever changed. So these two things you may or may not have. Again, it just depends on the application. The very last thing that comes with the kit, which everybody will have, is a test lead. And essentially all it is is just a 9006 female socket some wiring plugged into the end of it. This will not actually be used in the final installation, but a lot of people are confused as to what it's for. And basically, it's just a plug for the ballast that goes in here, and then you can touch the ends of it to the positive and negative terminals on the battery in case you just want to test fire the ballast, of course, with a bulb plugged in, uh, just in case you need to do any troubleshooting or anything like that, you know, if something's not working right off the bat. So we just include this really as a convenience thing. There's really nothing that you need to do with it aside from that. If you don't end up needing it, great, just put it aside or toss it. So that's everything that comes with the kit. So now we'll go ahead and we're gonna take the bumper off the car, just gain access to the rear side of the headlights and just show you the right way to put everything in. Once you have the headlights off the car, you're going to encounter one of two scenarios. Scenario A is where the headlights are completely sealed up in the back and closed by either a rubber or plastic cap like this. There's no connector going directly into the back of the bulb. The bulb is hidden inside of the housing underneath the cap like this. You can see it's in there. The other scenario is where the bulb is directly accessible on the back of the headlight just like this one, where the wiring will come from the car and directly into the back of the bulb. This is not what we're working on today. We're going to be working on a car that's more like this. So in this case, you actually need to modify this cap so that the wiring for your bulb can come through it. Now, a lot of times people are a little bit confused about that. What is this extra cable for? And that's exactly it. So basically, the connector that goes to the back of your halogen bulb here will, pat, will connect to these pins on the end of this wire, and you'll pass this through to the back of the housing. And ultimately, this will end up plugged in to the input on your relay harness and, and one side of the car or the standalone CAN bus harnesses on both sides of the car. So what you need to do is you're going to need to drill a 7 8 inch hole in the cap so that this rubber cap can fit through there and reseal the headlight perfectly. So we'll go ahead and we'll modify that cap so that we can get our pass through installed and then we can go ahead and install our CAN bus harnesses, the ballast, and put it all back together.